Uh, okay, there's a number of uh, BIM, BIM aspects I wish to look at this morning, which will hopefully be in, a, in addition to what uh, Ralph has already covered. Uh, but, but before we look at these, I just want to take a step back and, uh, and ask the question, where does BIM come from? And how has it evolved into what, uh, to the stage that it's reached today? So uh, if you don't know where BIM has come from, you might take a guess. And uh, perhaps you might say, well, BIM has come from a large multinational company with a huge research and development department. Uh, now that's a good guess, but it, it's, it's not correct. So then, then you might say, well, perhaps BIM was invented by a small contracting company or a small architecture firm. Again, it's another good guess, but it's, it's not the correct answer. So, so how has BIM come about? Well, BIM has come about through collaboration. And what I mean by that is BIM has developed through all these parties here, architects, engineers, uh, contractors, owners, surveyors, etc., all working together and sharing in, in information on, on one single model. Uh, and by the parties continuing to do this, we'll develop BIM even further than the standard which it's reached today. So it's all about collaboration and sharing of information, which, as you can expect, is, uh, is a huge change from traditional processes. Uh, but it's a change for the better, uh, as you would have seen in the, uh, the, the, the case study Ralph mentioned, and numerous other case studies available on BIM, which would be in the, the Eastman book, which uh, Alan uh, mentioned. Uh, so, uh, before we look at some of the additional BIM aspects, uh, I just want to sum up the different dimensions which BIM offers. Uh, Ralph would have covered a lot of the, uh, the, the uh, 3D design, uh, the, the first one there. Uh, but just to reiterate that 3D design on its own is not BIM. Uh, it's important for that, that, that 3D model to be a center of, of information, or a, a source of information, if you will. Uh, now, obviously, the, it, 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 it doesn't have to be a building. Uh, it obviously could be any type of facility, such as a structure, a road, or a, a, a bridge, etc. Um, 4D is all about phasing and planning, or uh, time. And this is whereby uh, you, you link elements from a, from a 3D model to activities and planning tools to create a, 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 a 4D model. Um, so software that would do this, for example, might be, might be Microsoft Project, uh, Primavera, Aster Power Project, Navisworks Manager, Tecla, etc. Uh, now, I'm, I suppose uh, I'm, I'm just giving a sample of some software which is available. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to endorse any or recommend any. I just hope to give a flavor of what's available on the, uh, on the market. Uh, 5D is the next one. That's, that, that's all about quantity takeoff and cost information, which is obviously useful for cost planning and estimation purposes. Again, software that would do this might be uh, even uh, Autodesk Revit or QTO, Namitech, Cost OX, Graphisoft, Constructor, Timberline, uh, or, or Excel, for example. So here I'm opening up Revit. There's a, a section through the building. Some of you, have, some of you have, have, uh, may have seen this before. There's the building itself. It's just a simple, uh, just a simple warehouse building. Um, and what we're going to do is we're, we're just going to quickly, in, 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 in about a minute, measure all the walls uh, automatically. But I'm just, just going to show you the walls first. So again, I'm just going to hide all the other elements, um, just, just so you can get an idea of, of, of what the walls do. Now, this is, there's nothing complicated about this. I mean, you, you can do this in most software packages. So there's the walls. Um, we're going to measure the, the brickwork, the blockwork, uh, insulation, and, and the cavity. So you can see it's, it's brick to two sides, and it's uh, rendered to the other two sides. Oops, sorry. So um, I'll just turn back on the walls now. Uh, just put the layers back on. OK, so the, the, the measurement process is, is, is uh, quite simple. We, we don't do any clicking at all with, with BIM. Uh, we, we just go to schedule quantity takeoff and we select walls. So uh, if you'll excuse my bad spelling, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a name. So we just call it ex external walls. Now we can, here, here we can decide whether we want the area, the, the width, the, 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 the volume. Uh, any, we, we, we can extract any information from the, from the model. And that is, a, I suppose, a, a business school one of one model uh, where we have time savings up at the top increased time down the bottom, correct quantities over here, and in incorrect quantities at the other side. Obviously, we, we, we want to be up at the end of time savings and correct quantities. So we, we want to be up at the top right with our measurement. Uh, currently, the traditional process, which I said is measuring with a, a ruler and pencil, is it's on the side of correct quantities, but it's down here at increased time. So we don't have significant time savings by measuring that way. Uh, the next process, as I said, is the digitizer process. And that's just clicking corners on the screen to get areas. Uh, we reduce our errors with, with, with this method, so we do get slightly better uh, quantities, and we do it in increased time, but the digitizer method doesn't get us over the line. 
So, as I said, we want to be up at the top right with uh, BIM quantity takeoff, but there's, uh, currently we're here. Now, what do I mean by the fact that we're in the top left and the top right? Well, there's two reasons why we could be at the top left, and it's training and, and how the model is designed. So, if the estimator at the surveyor isn't trained to use the software, um, he or she may not get the correct uh, quantities. And second of all, if, if, if the BIM isn't designed to the, the proper BIM standards with correct layering and uh, labeling, etc., you, you, you may get incorrect quantities. Some of these slides I'll fly through, because Ralph, Ralph covered uh, some of them earlier from the McGraw-Hill report, that 50% of, uh, of the Northern American industry is now using BIM, and that's a huge increase from uh, their last report, which I think was 2008. Um, all those BIM users plan significant increases in their use, so obviously they're, they're seeing some, some sort of benefit from it. And uh, the vast majority of these BIM users are experiencing real business benefits direct, directly uh, attributable to BIM. Now when they say the vast majority, I, I reckon that the people who aren't experiencing real business benefits, the, the, the keyword there is yet. Because there's such, a, there's such a strong learning curve with uh, BIM, uh, it, it, it may take a while to realize your, your business benefits. Uh, and finally, 87% uh, of expert users are experiencing a positive return on investment with, B, with, with BIM. Uh, the report doesn't say what an expert user is, but one can assume it's, it's somebody who's been using BIM for a number of years, but narrower. Now again, these are simple changes, but it's purely just to show you what, what, what you can do. Obviously, if you want to do a more complex change, that's still possible. So there's the, there's the door, which we made a little bit narrower. But you see what that looks like in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a 3D view. Again, as I said, it's a lot, it's a lot nicer on the actual iPad itself, because it's, it's, it's clearer than that. We can also look at it in a, in a traditional 2D view. You see, there's the, the door we added in the center just there, highlighted in, or it was in purple. So that's pretty much Revit, or uh, any, any type of software on, a, uh, on an iPad. So that concludes my presentation on 4D BIM, 5D BIM, and uh, iPhone apps. Uh, I'll now take any questions which you uh, may have. Thanks a lot.